Hindland Quarry in uh, Derbyshire, where we see a black hole got a load and haul operation for the hoist, and the hoist have very kindly allowed us to do a trial with the 2200 surface miner. Surface mining in the UK is not so common. Okay, we've got a common factor that Powerplane have used this technology before for different uh, solutions, not just for mining rock, but for mining hard materials on roads and concrete materials on airfields. And that, so they know the capability of the machine. The idea today is to demonstrate what it can do in a certain type of rock, and then those results from today can then be used going forward for different types. What we're looking to achieve is to identify as to what sort of outputs the 2200 surface miner can do in terms of excavation of the limestone and more particularly exactly what product we get from the surface miner after it's excavated the rock, i.e. what is the grading of the aggregate that comes through and how does that compare against the grading of, of the identical rock if you put it through a primary crusher. The aim of today's exercise is to establish the levels of vibration generated by the, uh, the surface miner here. The idea is, that, or the hope, is that this application can be used in situations where it's not possible to drill and blast, and obviously vibration is a major concern quite often. So the idea of this trial is to establish the levels of vibration generated and the rate at which the vibration decays from the machine and obviously that will inform where it can be used in future applications. This chassis uh, is our W2200 chassis which is capable of road planing, surface mining and also cold recycling. How we change the machine, uh, we change the milling drum, we change the conveyor system, we change the weights on the machine, that helps adapt to the different applications. What we have here today is in its uh, semi-mining mode, which means it's got a full-blown mining drum, full-blown mining tools. It's still got its road planing conveyor system and it's got half of its road planing weights. The main difference between a row planing drum and a surface mining drum is the size of the tools and the number of tools. A surface mining drum has um, around 75 tools. The size of the tools varies from a 20 millimeter shank on a row planer to a 45 millimeter shank on a surface miner. And the speed of the drum is also slowed down. Forward speed, uh, cutting depth, and uh, the actual spacing of the tools and the size of the tools creates a different uh, reaction and so we try to optimise the, these factors to get the best production and the best size material for ongoing processes. You know, we, we manufacture these machines um, and that's what we are, we're a manufacturer, we're not a contractor, we're not a user, we're, we, we are very close to our customers and, and we, we need our customer feedback to develop machines, we need to know what the market needs. Um, Powerplane are always very keen to give us that feedback and we're always very keen to deliver what they need going forward. Several really really good advantages one is if you look at the material over there it's ready crushed and able to be used in the form that it comes off the machine if you if you blast you get a whole range of materials from maybe one meter across to, to very small parts blasting creates a lot of vibration there's a lot of environmental considerations flying rocks noise and if there's any structures bridges houses nearby they have to be considered I'm certainly very impressed that it does what it says on the can. It digs rock at a reasonably impressive production rate, yes. Clearly that if situations arise where for one reason or other you are not allowed to drill and blast, then yes, in this type of rock it, it is clearly a, a viable alternative. Well, we've obviously got to go back and download all the data, but the initial indications are that the levels generated by the machine are relatively low um, and that they decay fairly rapidly with distance. So, uh, so yes, it's looking, uh, looking uh, positive. It should prove very informative once we've had time to sit down and look at the results of the timings and once we've done the material testing on, on the product in terms of the grading and the strength tests that hopefully should give us a good 
set of raw data of the machine in actual application and enables to, to have a, a good understanding of how its output compares against the theoretical output that you'll deduce from the from the Vergen handbooks. The, the results that we see today are pretty much what we expected um, with the with the milling drum that we've put in there. So it's confirmed our predictions, which is always good. And as I say, and I think it's surprised some of the guys who were maybe a bit sceptical about the ability of a converted row planing machine to, uh, to, to, to get these results.